Hi, this is Evan Goldstein, your host for Wine Couch TV. One of our more popular segments is a actually not wine segment, but sort of a wine and dining segment we do called Table Hopping with Marcia. Marcia, for those of you who have not watched the show before, is Marcia Galliardi, the proprietress of TableHopper.com, your one-stop shop and regular e-letter that comes out um, surveying what's going on in the dining, clubbing, enjoying, and partying, and eating scene in San Francisco. Uh, one of the things that we've done in previous shows is gone around and hit different restaurants in the San Francisco Bay Area, in Napa, we've been to LA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we're gonna come back uh, this time and come a little bit closer to home, but nevertheless, not in San Francisco. And I'll allude to that more in a couple of minutes. Um, one of the things that's really important within this segment is that we focus in on not only the restaurant, but also what wine program we're gonna be doing at that restaurant. And the place that we're about to see, as you'll see, has a wonderful and amazing sort of wine program. So without further ado, let's bring on Marcia. Marcia, thank you so much as always for being on the show. Now, when I think of fine dining in and around the Bay Area, I think of Napa Valley, I might think of Healdsburg, I certainly think of San Francisco, I think of the East Bay, but the Silicon Valley and the parts due south of us are not necessarily historically where I've thought to go. Now, Manresa has been doing a terrific job Absolutely. down the peninsula and David Kinch is brilliant. Jeff is a great sommelier. But there are other spots out there and a place that we're gonna talk about this week uh, housed in Saratoga, is, Let's go to Saratoga. Is the plumed, the plumed horse. horse. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about this restaurant. It's literally, I feel like it was transported from somewhere else and plunked into the sleepy little Saratoga. It's incredible. The design of mm -hmm. this place, it's very Vegas, actually. Um, just beautiful fabrics and lighting, and it's very swank. Um, so that alone is impressive and then wait until you see the one I, well, I'm, I'm thinking but you know this place is old i mean plumed horse i mean aside from that, oh, it that's sounds true. it's been they, around for like 50 this is something true. They years they completely renovated it i they, they they sunk an inordinate amount of money in renovating this place so yeah I, they've definitely dusted off what was previously yeah. there i mean because when you think of fine dining and, and destination dining a plumed horse sounds like more like something you'd see on a Ferris wheel yeah. <laughs> and not necessarily a destination yeah. restaurant. But to your point, the wine program, before we talk about the food, is something pretty monolithic. I mean, they've got yeah. over 1,800 wines on the wine program that uh, sommelier Seth oversees. And what's incredible is obviously the depth. I mean, it's clearly an award-winning wine list. I believe it's like best of excellence, a wine, wine spectator. Yeah. But they've got um, like, you know, almost 100 and something Burgundies from the 90s at mm -hmm. really, by Burgundy standards, reasonable prices, kind of a who's who of California. Every possible Pinot Noir that you've got to have from <laughs> yep. anywhere Full is coverage. on that yep. list. And then within the list itself itself, so you've got amazing bottles. But then even on the By the Glass program, which we'll talk about more mm -hmm. in a minute, they've got some jewels as well, oh, too. Oh, wait until you see the decanters. <laughs> yeah? Oh, yeah. No, it's... It's it's a show, totally. And, 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 and talk to us a little bit from the food standpoint, the chef, what they're doing. Peter Armolino is fantastic. He uh, was previously at Aqua. He also cooked at Chardonnier. Extraordinarily talented mm -hmm. chef. And actually, they have one of the coolest rooms I've ever seen. It's a uh, chef's table, but it overlooks the kitchen through this glass window. So you can have a private dining room overlooking the kitchen. And I mean, the kitchen is stunning. I think uh -huh. every chef would would die over it. Um, no, I haven't eaten there so like, but you don't hear the kitchen while this is Oh, no, 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 it's, but this would, this would be just for a private dining yeah. scenario, but yeah, if you're looking for a really unique destination for private dining, that would be, that would be extraordinary. Place, but, yeah. but yeah, he does these great tasting menus, mm -hmm. um, really balances unique ingredients, uh, it blew my mind. And the wine, the wine room itself is pretty, uh, pretty extra. I mean, oh, you're yeah. much more literate. Explain uh, how would you, how would you just, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like Oriol in Vegas, but not. But I mean, how would you describe the look? And you feel? walk into it, and it's like being in a space chamber. I mean, literally, glass floor. You look down, you see all the way down into the ground with I don't even know how many thousands of bottles, and then it's lit up. I mean, literally, you feel like you're. It's like dream. Wine space station. <laughs> wine, wine meets space. Yes. So as far as the wines go, I mean, obviously the list it speaks for itself. When you go down there, you will be uh, mightily impressed. But I always look for the wines by the glass. I mean, that's kind of what's interesting for a lot of people and certainly things that we can talk about. And what's cool about their wine by the glass section, and they've got California, France, they've got all the usual suspects covered. But what's neat is the prices range, you know, from, uh, you know, eight bucks all the way up to 50. And they're not just young current releases, which we'll talk about because it's hard for us to find these older bottles to taste on mm -hmm. the show. But 
you can find, I, I was looking on here, I mean, they've got a 2001 Merlot from Lewis Sellers that they're pouring by the glass, a 2001 Henschke Johans Garden from the Barossa Valley Shiraz. So they're wines that actually got some age on them. So you're not necessarily drinking these reds that are going to rip your mouth out. And you've got some whites that have some development, some additional flavor and things like it's that. It's a definite treat. So um, the wine that we're going to talk about today is a wine that they're pouring by the glass. And it's a 2007 Russian River Pinot Noir from Davis Bynum Winery. Mm -hmm. Now, the Russian River, of course, is uh, one of the spots in the great state of California for Pinot Noir and is known for a very fleshy, uh, plummy, deep-fruited character and style. Mm -hmm. Rather than sort of the, the very pronounced, uh, focused cherry and some of the more interesting berry flavors that you'll get further south and over in the Carneros, um, Russian River is really a sexy stuff. I mean, the wines are as much about texture as they are about the deep, rich flavors. Salute. Mm. Mm. Now at $12 a glass, which is what they charge for this, it has that sort of rich mouth uh, filling with the French call gras or fat or texture on their wine, which is really lovely, but um, balanced acidity and is going to go well with a range of dishes. And I would think as they're doing like a, a degustation or something, a wine that would be really diverse and, mm -hmm. and be able to play with. So what, what, what about these degustation menus? Well, uh, let's take a look at some. I mean, they're, they're stunning, very luxurious flavors, but um, especially with that wine that we just tasted, they had... It was almost like a surf and turf uh -huh. with um, a wild Columbia River sturgeon Ooh. with braised beef cheek and a black olive vinaigrette. So that was... That would pull this wine together beautifully. Yep. You know, I think the, the beauty of red, of Pinot Noir, is it's actually as happy with fish as it is with meat. So if you put the two of them together... Plays well with others. Plays well with others, absolutely. And I will say that um, Peter, Chef Armelino, has done this really nice twist on the ubiquitous ahi tuna tartare mm -hmm. because he has some mustard oil in Ooh. it. So that completely, and a beautiful presentation too, this little bridge over the top. And yeah, that was a good start to the meal for sure. So um, so you can go do it this way. You abalone, have... I mean, oh, okay. The uni and Dungeness crab fondue. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Two with, of my favorite black things. black pepper, Parmesan souffle. Mm. Okay, seriously, get thee to the plumed horse. Yeah, that yep. sounds like a, that, uh, and uh, race and, down. And I know some people, intended. some people get a little worried about, oh, you know, drive all the way down there and have this meal. I mean, there are plenty of great places to stay. Make it a little getaway. Yeah. You know? And it's certainly, obviously, at this level, it's not going to be an inexpensive. But I think, based on everybody I've talked to, everyone has come out of there raving and feel like, even though it's a little pricey, especially in this day and age, it's actually a great value for what you get. Yeah. Yep. And it's a great experience. So, yeah. So, so we we'll, we definitely going to do that and race down to Saratoga on your plumed horse. <laughs> uh, before we get out of here, our uh, wine catch word of the week, we always got to do that. And um, we were talking back and forth. We said, what would be fun to say? And you threw out torchon. Now, torchon is something, I, when I was cooking in France, a torchon is like what I carried on the side of my apron to wipe down the spills and the uh -huh. constant messes I was making. But in the concept of culinary, it's a little bit different. Yes, it'd be um, a foie that is poached and served cold. And it comes in a cylindrical shape. And so it's funny because when you mention that that's what you call the torchon, it's because it's cooked in cheesecloth. So ah, so you've sort of wrapped it up and... Exactly, you know, exactly. I, yeah, they served it with a pickled cherry at... Um, Ooh, I hope they took the cheesecloth off, the cheese cloth <laughs> off before like, they served it. Like, what's this Band-Aid doing yeah. on my flaw? Yeah. Not, All right, we can not go on classy. Yeah. Last before we get out of here, you've got you've got a book. Yeah. Tell us about that real quick. It's going to be The Table Hopper's Guide to Dining and Drinking in San Francisco. Find the right spot for every occasion. And coming out uh, with 10-speed press in March 2010. Very cool. Very cool. Anyway, uh, that's all the time we have for this week. We'll see you next time. Get on that plumed horse. Gallop down to Saratoga if you're in the Bay Area or hop a plane if you're not. Yeah. And we'll see you next time around. Until then, you take care. Giddy up. <laughs>